Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between a systems engineer and a network engineer. So my name is Emilio, I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And we are talking about systems and network engineers. What are the differences? Let's define each of those and then really just talk about the differences between each. Generally, a systems engineer is going to be somebody who's going to be looking after uh, IT systems. So they could be responsible for looking after servers, after things like virtualization. Uh, they could be looking after storage, you know, SAN and NAS devices. Essentially, they're going to be a level three IT engineer. So. We have to find these in, in, in different videos, but generally a level one and a level two engineer or a support man, a support engineer or something similar to that uh, are the people who are gonna be looking after the standard desktops, um, you know, going out and fixing things, uh, installing new software, receiving calls to reset passwords, those sort of things. Then you move into the level three space, which is generally a systems person getting involved in the server space, in the comms cabinets, in the server cabinets, something similar to what's like here behind me, and maybe racking equipment, configuring equipment, uh, working, as I said, with virtualization. So working with things such as uh, VMware, uh, going in and building virtual servers, decommissioning built, um, you know, virtual servers, migrating virtual servers over. Uh, if they have a responsibility around looking at after storage, going in and configuring storage area networks such as SANs or network attached storage such as NASs, uh, you, know, you know, building the uh, the RAID groups, configuring the storage pools, the LUNs, the uh, the SMB shares, the NFS shares, uh, those sort of things. They may be responsible for things such as uh, Active Directory. Uh, going in and configuring Active Directory more from a level three perspective, uh, building the domain, working with domain controllers, uh, working with DNS, uh, you know, DNS servers, going in and configuring things on DHCP, uh, those sort of things. So they're really going to be focusing on the level three system tasks. Now, generally, you may hear the term systems administrator and systems engineer uh, sort of interchangeably used. Uh, generally, uh, the responsibilities are very similar to, between the two. I would see the systems admin as that first point before they move into a systems engineer. Systems admin is really just responsible for the day-to-day -day support of, uh, you know, of, of all of these systems, of all of these servers, of all of these devices on the network, making sure that they run correctly, making sure that they're healthy, checking monitoring, uh, making sure that the endpoint protection is running correctly, those sort of things. The engineer may be more responsible around the design element, configuring things, a bit more architectural, um, you know, sort of thinking about how the systems are configured, how the servers are configured, those sort of things as well. Now, a systems engineer can also be used as a general term for somebody that does look after network components also. So a systems engineer could be responsible for the network switches, the network routers, the firewalls. So there could be an element of network engineering or network administration uh, within the title of systems administrator or systems engineer, but not always the case. Uh, sometimes you may find this in a small organization where they may not be able to hire a systems engineer and a network engineer. So they just use the term systems engineer to encompass all of the IT engineering aspects, all of the IT administration aspects of the role. On the flip side, then you've got the network engineer. This is generally somebody, let's say in a medium, a large business where you want to get somebody who's now specialized or focused primarily on the network side of things. So we mentioned before, a network engineer could be responsible for switch management, uh, looking after you know the switches, the patching, the ports uh, across the switches, uh, patch panels uh, running into different areas of the building, uh, making sure that the switching network is configured properly, that it's set up with VLANs, uh, set up with different subnets, etc., etc. They may be responsible for routers, for connections out to the ISPs, links out for you know for your internet, cross offices. You know if you have multiple offices, the connections between those offices, uh, things such as firewalls. The security of the network, making sure that the firewalls are configured correctly, making sure that only the relevant traffic can come in and out of a network, 
between subnets, those sort of things as well. They may be responsible as well to an element uh, around uh, load balancing, around proxies, uh, making sure that that is all secure and configured correctly, that the systems underneath the network uh, can function from a load balancing perspective. So generally what I have found anyway is that most network engineers will not be involved so much from a server side of things. So they may not be responsible for looking after servers, for building servers, for designing you know, a virtualization environment, a new VMware, a new Hyper-V environment, um, you know, building some new storage devices. They may not have an element of that, uh, uh, that, that responsibility in their, um, in their job responsibility description. But uh, again, the terms between systems engineer and network engineer can be, uh, I guess, bleed into one another. So there could be many network engineers that do get involved in system tasks. But they're generally the differences between the two. The systems engineer is gonna be looking after server infrastructure, uh, a active directory, the backend services, uh, making sure that those things are correctly configured, they're building things, they're configuring virtualization, etc. The network engineer looking after the network, looking after the security, the routing, the switching, the firewalls, those sort of things. And they're gonna be working very, very closely together to achieve the same goal. So because they have bleed in effect between the others, uh, the roles can sort of move from one to another. And a systems guy is going to be needing to work very closely with a network guy. A network guy needs to be working very closely with a systems guy. Because if a network person needs to make certain changes on a switch or on a firewall, it's gonna directly have an impact on the systems person because they could lose services. On the flip side, if a systems person needs to configure some new infrastructure, rack some new servers, they may need the network engineer to be involved to be able to give them relevant ports on a switch to let the, you know, the network guy know, hey, look, I need to configure these servers on these VLANs under this particular firewall traffic open. You know, I've got two servers that need to communicate over SMB or I need to ping each other. The network guy would do that on behalf of the system guy who's requesting that service. So, there you go, that is my overview. I'm sure that there's things that I've missed. Uh, the roles are very broad, very diverse, uh, have a lot of bleeding effect between the two, which uh, you know I mentioned before. Love it if you commented as well. Subscribe to Digital Bike Computing for a whole bunch of more videos and we'll see you next time.